author of 20 novels, 17 New York Times bestsellers, over 10 million books in print, and published in over 25 languages. Please welcome Jane Green. Cheers. Cheers. So, the detail of publishing, the process and the players, speak something to that. Well, um, there is no one way, and what works for one person is not necessarily going to be the thing that works for another person. I like having an agent. Um, I feel like the agent is, can, it, it's, it's really good to have a bad cop to your good cop. You don't ever really want to be in a position where you are the one making noises if a publisher's not doing their job. It just, you know, you, you as with everything in life, people work with people they like. Um, and especially as, as, as a, I think we try very hard to be likable, but sometimes, especially in, in the field of business, when people aren't doing their jobs, as a woman, when you start to speak up about that, you're labeled as difficult or high maintenance or and uh and i think having an agent is is the greatest way to get around that it's also if you are new to the business i mean uh, you know having somebody who can navigate that for you i think is essential um having an agent you trust some agents have a very heavy hand editorially. They get very involved. Most agents in America will get involved in the editorial side. They will give you notes, some more than others. Um, I, I know a lot of um, aspiring writers will pay vast amounts of money for, for editors. Um, I, I'm always a little bit nervous about that. I think, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with taking on an independent editor, but once you have a book deal and it, you know, if, if that is your ultimate goal, you're going to be assigned an editor and everybody, it's completely subjective and everybody's going to have a different viewpoint of what your story needs. Um, I would say, Step one, I would always suggest getting an agent or at least it's from an agent. If an agent then suggests work with an editor, if they can recommend an editor, you know, that, that's something I would consider. But I feel a bit about people using freelance editors as I do about people doing endless writing courses. I mean, it's fine, but at, at a certain point it becomes procrastination. At a certain point, you just have to write the damn thing and send it out. And... And, you know, even though um, it can take many, many passes, I, I do think we know when, when we're there. Sometimes we don't know quite how to get there. Um, and, uh, but you shouldn't be even thinking about submitting something that, that isn't ready, that you don't feel is quite there. You, you don't want to even give it to anybody to read until you believe it's the absolute best that you can do with all you have in that moment. And when we spoke before, it was a terrific tip in terms of literary agents, that a literary agent, rather than the big publishing houses, is more accessible, is looking for the next Harry Potter, as you put it, um, and a, a way of finding perhaps a suitable agent could be, if you don't have someone that can recommend someone, uh, would be to find a genre of the book of which you're writing and look for the acknowledgement of who the literary agent in that case was and yeah. reach out to them. I think that's such a terrific, clever tip. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the acknowledgements of, of um, books are the most useful thing in the whole wide world. Because it's really happened. Someone's actually done it. They know what they're doing, clearly, because they were successful in getting it done. Right, right. Yeah. And what about the, so the process, you would say, for an unknown would be get a literary agent, and that isn't something that's untenable, not necessarily be uh, rushing to get editors to start editing it, get the raw work, but finished, as finished as you can get it, to a literary agent, yeah. who then and may be the one that would recommend an, an editor uh, suitable for the work that you've presented, presumably. Exactly. And I think, you know, again, I'm going to reiterate, don't be half-assed about it. 
don't submit anything that you're a bit embarrassed about. I, you know, I remember somebody that I, I know who I really love. I think she's wonderful, but she self-published a book. And, and I, when I said to her, oh, can I read it? She went, oh, it's just, a, it's a nothing. It's just, you know, it's not very good. And I thought, well, it's not very good. Why are you even putting it out? Why do that? Why would you put something out there that you're too embarrassed to have another writer read? That should never happen. If that's the case, don't do it. Don't do it. That book is not ready to be published in any way, shape or form. As it happened, I did get the book and it wasn't ready to be published. <laughs> in any way, shape or form. Um, and that is... That's that's nice. the that's that's a nice foil for our previous conversation where you had a friend submit something and said, and you offered to read it, which isn't something you typically do. And fortuitously, it was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, the, you know, the thing is, it, it just, if, if you, if you're embarrassed to have anybody read it, then, then this is not a book that should be read by anybody at all. This is, this is not a book that should be sent out. And, and, and and again, from a marketing point of view, what you've said before is you are going to be responsible for much of your own promotion oh, marketing. Yes. And yes, if you're, you're not confident to stand behind your own words, it's not going to work. Yeah. And, and it requires so much work. Yeah. The, I will do, I think I said this before, maybe 30 edits. You know, by the time that book gets published, I'm so sick of it. I never, ever want to look at it again. Writing requires a tremendous amount of work and anybody who thinks it's easy is not doing it right so the literary agent you've you've got your work complete you find a literary agent the agent could be the source of editing and they might yeah. have the right recommendation for it so don't get too hung up on the editing but be confident that you know it's complete as you can get it yes once you've got it into the hands of the literary agents um that role then becomes it becomes their responsibility to find a home for your book yes and, and they obviously and wouldn't take it unless they can see there's an opportunity presumably well that that's agent worth their salt is going to waste hours and hours of their time on a book that they don't think can sell having said Actually, that I, I lost a little bit of that it sounded like he's going to waste only because yeah. of the so so Start, just no, do that again i'll cut into it which is no agent no agent worth their salt is going to waste hours and hours of their time working on a book that they don't believe will sell having said that i know plenty of stories and i've had the experience myself of being with an agent who clearly thought that they could sell something thought it would be much easier than it was when it didn't sell like that just clearly lost interest and continued sort of throwing out the carrot for quite a long time with me sort of waiting and, and nothing was and clearly nothing was happening and and sometimes you just have the wrong fit and 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 finding the right fit is really hard um and there isn't a magical formula sadly i do you, um, do you sort of sign up an option to that agent that precludes you from saying okay, I'm having it back, I'm putting it somewhere else? I've never signed with any agent. I've never actually signed papers with an agent. And I would say, don't ever do that. I mean, it's traditionally been a gentleman's agreement. And the truth is, if you don't want to be represented by an agent anymore, no agent is going to want to continue to represent right. you. Um, but I would say never, ever sign papers. I mean, really, if it's not working, it's not working and, and you just move on. And I've had good breakups and bad breakups, um, which is really unfortunate. But one, one really bad breakup, um, but it happens, you know, it just happens. It's a, it's a relationship like any others and bad communication is not what you want in any relationship. So that's the literary agent. Once you're in the hands of the literary agent, the things are moving along in a, in a good way. Um, and they introduce you to a publishing opportunity. Um, when that occurs, uh, I know we spoke about it to some extent previously, but to get into the detail of it, um, there doesn't seem to be like one way that it gets handled. There'll be a, some kind of promotion, but it depends what the book is that you're promoting. 
but who gets to be responsible for what? So for example, author to author promotion, author book talks, would you expect to have yourself be paid for the book tour or you are expected to be on the books? <laughs> are you oh, no, I wish. <laughs> uh, no. So once, once you have, once you have your book deal, your site, your, the editor is generally the person that buys you. They become your point of contact. They become your, you know, sister, mother, best friend, but I mean, they become the person that, that really does take the reins. And you, you, I've always formed very close uh, relationships with my editor. When it comes to things like book tours um, and other author events, and the, the truth is it used to be in the old days, I know we've touched upon this, it used to be that the marketing and PR team did all of that. Now so much of it has to be done by you and this is where social media plays a vital role authors are getting to know other authors we all know even if we've never met in real life we all know each other through social media um, most people are incredibly generous and, and we understand we're all in it together we're all trying to help each other out and so if you can let your readers know about another author who has a book out then you're going to do everything you can in the hope that there is you know reciprocal generosity and that they will do the same for you so it's very much a relationship business like so many others you have a, a deal with a publisher, and in this instance, the, you refer to them as an editor, your editor, but really, editor publisher is in this sense. Yeah. So they're your editor, but it's really. Your editor it's, within the publisher, yes. yes. Your editor yeah. who is employed by HarperCollins, Penguin Random House, Pam McMillan. Uh, uh, but the person you work with is the editor in those publishing yeah. houses. Yeah. So uh, they are bringing you to uh, various events to promote the book and you're effectively working with them and it's kind of part well, of Well, they're the not bringing, they don't, your editor doesn't have anything to do with the events. Events are put on by the PR team, by the publicist. So okay. you'll be assigned a publicist and the publicist will put together um, all your events and your book tour. Now, fewer and fewer publishers are even doing book tours for people now because they're expensive they cost money and generally people don't really show up unless you're a big name or it's a special night so for example danny shapiro at the westport library that was you know a big deal we had i think 200 250 people oh, i think it was good yeah yeah um but you know i did something i i did an event with a couple of authors who are friends of mine and i adore them it was an existing event and they asked me to moderate and it was at a local bookstore and there were maybe nine people there and that's what happens at local bookstores um it, you know times are very different now in the old days you look at somebody like uh, Jacqueline Suzanne who had an enormous success with Valley of the Dolls in the 1960s. Wow, yeah. And how she made that book was she went out on the road. She went to every bookstore in America. She signed millions. She just got out there. Unfortunately, although we like to think, oh, you know, even if three people show up, if you touch those three people, they'll go, it, it, I'm not sure that it really works like that anymore. Um, I think that you have to do an awful lot of online work. The biggest, look, some books are just gonna capture the zeitgeist. They're gonna capture the public's imagination. They're not gonna need a lot of money behind them. You know, Fifty Shades of Grey, publishers, self-publishers, fan fiction, ended up as this huge book because it captures something in the public's imagination. Um, and really, you, you can never predict when that's gonna happen. Other than that, the real the difference is in the marketing spend and i think it's very hard to get publishers to spend proper money on marketing now and actually what's quite interesting is the hybrid publishers in some ways may be more inclined to think out of the box and do things a bit differently um but most publishers will have a relatively small marketing spend i think there's still 
catching up with the new way and technology and the internet and and publishers still think they can get by with PR but P the truth is publicity has become largely irrelevant you there is no publicity anymore there are kind of online things but it's not like the old days where you'd have reviews in all the magazines and the newspapers which would sell your books that doesn't really work and you mentioned good reads last time in terms of promotional value I think I think good look anything that can that can create a wave and a buzz is going to be incredibly helpful. Good reads is certainly a, a really good uh, uh, website for that when people are excited and they start talking. But ultimately, there is no magic formula, or we'd all be employing it. So I I think that's a good level of extra detail in terms of the way it works with publishing. Uh, the one area that I think is really unexplored in publishing that I actually think can be massively influential is uh, influencers and not necessarily book influencers although there is this huge sort of bookstagram community on Instagram although I, I think they're an extraordinary community and I really absolutely credit the bookstagram community with my last book getting onto the New York Times bestseller list I, I know it was because of the bookstagram community but I remember I there was a Bollywood star, and I, I don't even remember her name, but a Bollywood star who has millions of followers tw did an Instagram story one day of her reading one of my books. Wow. Crying, reading one of and I had thousands of new followers within a 24-hour period. It was extraordinary. Yeah. And so I think, my God, if you could somehow get a Kardashian, <laughs> or just get somebody who has clout. I mean, Reese Witherspoon now has the book club. If Reese Witherspoon picks your book, that makes a difference in the way that it used to make a difference when Oprah picked your book. That can be the, the making of a novel.